Good morning, Monday morning here, and, and we're gathered again in the parking lot at Meyer. During this quarantine, you know, we're trying to really honor the, the, the separation and the social distancing, and so we're recording these messages in the car, right? So uh, we're not interacting with other people, and you can watch this in the comfort of your own home, on your computer, on your phone, whatever it is, and we can stay connected that way. Yesterday we talked about... Paul's letter to the Romans and, and the part in that letter that talked about the difference between being carnal and being of Christ, right? And so I want to continue on that path as we talk about what it is that separates what Paul is saying, the Christian from the non-Christian, the Christ follower from the, the, the non-follower, right? That there's a distinct pattern, there's a distinct way of living that is, should be, according to Paul and according to the scriptures, there should be a, a definite distinction between those who follow Christ and those who don't, right? There should be something that separates us. It's not like we wear a t-shirt or, or a hat or some kind of a uniform or, or some physical change happens in us that, that we can, can say, look, this is what happens when you become a Christian. What happens when you become a Christian is the ability to use the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit use you to transform, to transform yourself through the power of the Holy Spirit into the image of Christ, right? Into being as close to being like Christ as a human can be, right? That's our goal is to strive for that. And part of that is to show the world that there is a difference between the Christian and the non-Christian, not in an us and them, but that there's a maturity, there's something that's fulfilling us in the way of being a Christian and being completely as if we were created in God's image, right? We have God's image in us. We need to ignite that image. And how do we do that? We let the Spirit in. When we let the Spirit in, it releases those those images. It releases those traits. And those traits we talked about are in Galatians, right? We talked about them yesterday. <clears throat> in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, right? Let's review them. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ have crucified self and its passions and desires. And so what Paul's trying to tell us, guys, is that when we become a Christian, right, we put to bed, or we begin to put to bed, and we start to see that those carnal way of living, that 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 human way of living, that way that says, I just want to protect myself, I want to gather all I can, I want to keep everything I can, I want to hoard all the stuff, right? It's all about who gets the most toys at the end of the day. Right? It's that selfishness mentality, that totally natural way of living versus the Christian who changes, right? Who, who, who comes at life now with a different perspective because the center of their world is now the Spirit of God, right? Is Christ. And so because of that, these, these fruit of the Spirit will start to grow and manifest. And so I want to take a look at, at one of those today and, and kind of peek through the rest of these as we go forward. But the one I want to pull out today is patience. I want to talk about patience for a minute. Let me grab some of the notes here that I have because I want to be able to share these things with you. You know, the dictionary says that patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to be a tad impatient. I have a tendency to, to not really have the best when it comes to being patient. I'm a, I'm a t temperamental and I have to work on that, right? If there's a slow driver, some of you may be able to relate with this, relate with this is as you get on the road and you get behind that slow driver, or that semi, and you can't pass. And what happens? We start getting a little upset and we start getting a little bit of road ragey, right? We start getting a little impatient. We start to talk, we get upset. Same thing happens if we're walking behind a slow customer with their shopping cart. Whatever it is, it's slowing us down. And it could be something in our life, right? It could be just our life circumstances. Why are things happening the way they're happening? What is going on in our country, in our world, in our city, at our church? All of these things can cause stress and, and can cause us to become impatient, right? We don't like to wait for things. 
Human beings are an instant gratification group. This society is all about instant gratification and being patient does not fit in. And so the definition that says it's our capacity to accept and tolerate delay, trouble, and suffering without getting angry or upset, right? We have the capacity to do it, but are we able? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29 says this about patience. Patience leads to abundant understanding, but impatience leads to stupid mistakes. Now, how many of us have ever heard the saying, haste makes waste, right? When we, when we charge in a lot of times, we do stuff without thinking about it. We get impatient. What happens? We screw things up. I've done it many times where you just charge in. You don't think about it. You become impatient. You make a mistake. No, it happens, right? And so we as Christians, one of the fruit of the Spirit that comes through when you really focus your life on Christ is the ability to tolerate suffering, trouble, and delay. And right now in our world, there's a lot of suffering going on. There's a lot of delay. There's a lot of trouble, it seems. Right? You turn on the news like I did this morning, and what do you hear? Coronavirus this, COVID-19 that. Every, every, everybody's, there's all kinds of problems. People are dying from this. This is a real thing. And it's causing a lot of stress, and it's causing a lot of people to be impatient. And when people get impatient, they do things that they regret. And the Bible tells us that we have to focus on the fact that we have to be patient. We have to understand that, you know what, it's going to be okay. Why? Because God's in charge. God's in control. God's the one who can guide us through this. But part of the, part of the journey and the learning is being able to understand that even when things are going bad, God's still in control and we need to wait and be patient and listen to him. And follow his guidance and follow where he's leading and understand that he knows the path through this. He understands. If you want some reading to do later today, I would encourage you to turn to Job chapters 20 and 21. And, and, and if you read those chapters, you're going to find that one of Job's friends is kind of giving him a lecture on the fact that that this is this you you don't have any hope, Job. Your life is terrible. The wicked people die horribly only the good the heavens only about you know how bad some sinner is and it's going to prove it in the heavenlies and job responds with the fact that that is not true that we have to rise above our human instinct to be impatient and understand that even in suffering god loves us even as we suffer we are loved and sometimes we end up suffering even on god's behalf it doesn't always go well for the Christian. It doesn't always go perfect for the Christian. How many of us as Christians, how many of us as Christ followers have lives that have turmoil, have lives that we know people who are sick, we know people who are struggling. Life doesn't always go our way. We struggle financially. We struggle health-wise. We struggle in a lot of areas. And it makes us very impatient because we want what we want. We want life to be smooth. We want life to be comfortable, but we sometimes forget where that comfort comes from. We have to be patient and realize that our comfort comes from the Lord. Our comfort comes from the fact that, that we have Christ. And we have to be patient. We have to be patient with other people. And when people see that patience, right, they see that the ability to, in the middle of chaos to tolerate. In the middle of chaos that we have the capacity to accept the fact that we can't control it, we can't control this pandemic, we can't control some of the bad things that happen, we can't control all of the aspects of life, but we can certainly have the capacity to be patient as we wait for the Lord to open the doors. And so today, as we move forward in Monday, a brand new week, there's so many opportunities for us to show that we are waiting and working forward and looking forward to seeing what God has in store for our families, for our church, for our city, and our state, and our country. Right? The Lord will be glorified through all this, friends. The Lord will be a shining light throughout this entire thing and continues to be our guide. And so as, as the world wakes up this morning on Monday morning, I would encourage you as you wake up to take a minute, pause, and ask God, 
to walk with you today, to slow your steps, to, to ease your mind as you begin to, to develop what it takes to, to be patient and wait upon the Lord. His answers come. His blessings come. They will come. We just have to be willing to, to engage in the capacity to wait and be patient for the Lord. Will you pray with me this morning? Great and awesome God, in all of the chaos that is this world, and all of the things that are going on in this world that make it stressful, filled with anxiety, make it so that we just want to, 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 to lash out sometimes with our impatience on why do these things happen, and why is it happening this way, and why me? Help us, Lord, through the power of your Spirit inside us to take a deep breath of you today, to breathe you in and ask you to help calm our nerves, settle our spirits, help us to move forward today, showing the fruit of the Spirit that we can be patient in the face of adversity, that we can be productive in the face of adversity, that we can stay level-headed in the face of adversity and we don't make silly mistakes because we act too hastily. Lord, help guide us this day and each and every day to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hey, friends, have a great day. Hope you're blessed today. Be a blessing for someone else if you can. Work today to show Christ's love to somebody around you. Have a good one. Love you guys. Bye-bye.